Alright everyone Maharib is here and I wanted this channel to be free from all the fuss and make this a wholesome all positive sunshine and rainbows type of channel with zero negativity so I can attract positive side of my audience and have fun within the community. But in that process, I never spoke what I actually wanted in any matter even when some of you wanted me to speak on those matters. I held on to my thoughts and hot takes just so I can stay away from getting involved in any further drama or fuss within the community. But now I think I cannot hold on to that any longer. I am going to give my takes on different topics whether anyone likes that or not. So you can now welcome that previous unhinged, outrageous, and evil Muhara back with another hot take. Because I think this new endgame is an absolute garbage and the worst kind of game mod any gacha game has ever created. And I will let you know why. So let me first tell you what this endgame, I mean game mod is. Because of course it's not an endgame for me. Once you enter in this mysterious room in the library, you see that this room is going upward which gives me extreme motion sickness as it is. Someone just stopped this room from ascending to Celestia. Anyways, in short, you have to use random characters of specific elements to enter in this game mod and clear content. It has a few things here and there, like you can get one character from your friend group and some trial characters to help you clear it, which is already dumb in my opinion. Because if you are creating an end game, you don't have to assist in the challenge yourself. Giving buffs here and there is a part of the game but giving trial characters for the game mod you yourself created is just dumb. But if they want to assist, no one is saying no to them, so I have no problem with that. But that's still not the main focus. This game focuses on building your accounts horizontally instead of vertically. Well, in case you are living under a rock, horizontal investment means building a lot of characters decently and vertical investment means min-maxing few characters and making those characters the best in your account. I mean building different characters or horizontal investment has its own advantages and disadvantages. Keep that in mind that I always supported horizontal investment and players building different characters so they can at least try different playstyles which is great experience. I mean these kinds of games are supposed to be played with different characters, right? But the problem is not just horizontal investment and giving players a way to enjoy different characters and playstyles, the problem is the system they developed and a way they used to force players into doing this whether they like it or not. So I will go from it one by one. So stay with me till the end and if you have anything to say after that, you can join my Discord or leave a comment. First let's talk about requirements of entry. To enter in the hard mode of Imaginarium Theater, you need 18 characters of specific elements built up to at least level 70. Even if you consider two trial characters and a character from friend group, these are still 15 characters you must build up before you can even start this game mod. And these 18 characters need to be of three specific elements meaning six characters of each element. So if we have to be prepared for the future versions of Imaginarium Theater, we will have to level up 42 characters of 7 different elements. And most of the players just say leveling everyone to 70 is not that tedious. But that's not true. If you're going to level up characters, you have to level up their weapons as well. And I am going to set the bar very low here, so you have to level up a character to level 70, level their talents up to at least 666, or at least the main talents level to 6. Give them at least a 4-star artifact set focusing on main stats only no need to min-max substats here. Level up their weapons to at least level 70. And all that, you have to do with 42 characters. Considering that each and everything needs resin, it's a bulk load of work. Right now, the elements we have are Pyro, Electro, and Enemo. And you know these are some very widely used elements in the game. So a lot of players could have some characters already at high investment, which is the reason why most of the players right now are not feeling as much pressure doing this version of Imaginarium Theater. But what if in the next version you have to use Geo or Cryo? I know not a lot of players focused on having those elements built up because of their underperformance in the meta. In short, you can say in theory that we just have to level up characters to level 70, but giving them a weapon and leveling up artifacts and talents will also cost at least something, right? And this game doesn't give you millions of Mora and hundreds of fragile resins to do that. Secondly, this is a gacha game, meaning you have very less control over what characters you can get. If anything, you can choose which 5-star you want to spend your wishes on, but what 4-star characters you will get with those banners are completely out of your control, and there is no guarantee you will even get all 4-stars from that banner or not. So there is no saying how long an account will take to get all the collection of characters. Plus, wishing is not a straightforward task. Sometimes players save for months to get their desired character. It's just that even getting the characters is based on gacha. So how can anyone expect players to be okay with a type of endgame which needs 18 characters of specific elements just to enter in a game mod? If you start playing Genshin now, you could have higher chance of clearing Abyss in a couple of months, but you might not even get the chance to enter in the hard mode of Imaginarium Theater for over a year, or even more. That's just dumb. 
The way I see is that maybe you just pull on every banner to get as many 4 stars as you can. And we all know how that goes mostly. Once you get a 5 star you don't like, next 5 star can take months to get. That's why no one ever in their right mind suggested pulling for a 4 star on a banner where you don't need its 5 star. And we are talking about 42 characters here. That's a lot of characters. So forget the part where I talked about how difficult it is to build that many characters with very low resources, even getting a lot of characters is not an easy task when you don't even know which character you are going to get next. Your account can have a lot of pyro characters and no cryo character. Or you can have some C6-4 stars and very less roster of different characters in return. It's not fair to say that if some people were able to clear this in one go, means everyone is on the same boat. I mean I still have a lot of characters I just have to build, which is still better than those who don't have enough characters to even enter in a game mod like this. Thirdly, team compositions. With the restrictions of elements, comes the restrictions of teams as well. And you know some characters are just too restrictive in their teams as it is. For example Shavrus. She is an overload-focused character. Right now we can use both Pyro and Electro, but this could not be the case in the future. What if in the future they force you to use only Pyro, Dendro, and Cryo elements? You won't be able to use Overload Team. It's the same with Nilo, or Emily, or even with Sino. You know he is a Hyperbloom-oriented character so you cannot use him with most efficiency in this version of Imaginarium Theater. But then again, why would you pull for him in the first place? <clears throat> my apologies. And that's why, my friends, even the difficulty of hard mode is not as high. So you can just use the characters you built without caring too much about team compositions. But this is the problem. What's the point in forcing players to build all these characters when you don't even get to play and enjoy with their most optimal teams? This doesn't make any sense. And last point I wanted to mention is personal preference. Most of the players just don't like to build every single character. They just want to min-max few particular characters that they like to build and play. Forcing them to do what they don't want to do is not a very good gesture from the game developers. Those players who already went for C2 Raiden or Nahida, or pulled for signature weapons and constellations for their favorite characters, and spent months in their artifacts domains to get the best possible combinations, it feels like a scam to suddenly get a game mod that doesn't even care about anything they've done up to this point. If you're one of those people, I feel sorry for you. But it's not like all of what they did is just useless now. Abyss is not going anywhere. But since both of these endgames will take turns, it means you have to create two very powerful teams and build almost all the characters you have. Which is just too problematic in a game with so little resources to do all that. So in my opinion, this is not an endgame. It's not challenging, it's not thrilling. And it's not something that tests your skills or gives you a tough time. It's just a game mod that forces you to build all the characters that you have. Because at the end of the day, character collection and character building is the real end game of Genshin Impact. Anyways, it's not like there's all negative here. At least we get an excuse to build the characters we never built before. And that's a good thing. Well, I mean that's the only good thing I can see here. But this could be done in various different ways. Right now this game mod is nothing less than an absolute garbage. So I will be creating one video of fixing Imaginarium Theater and an updated guide for both new and old players because right now we both are on the same boat. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned and if you got some ideas on how this game mod could be fixed or what Hoyoverse should have done instead of what they did with that, you can let me know in the comments section or join my Discord. I already have a few ideas in my mind and if I like your ideas, I might add those in my future videos as well. There is nothing I love more than creativity. See ya. Peace. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comments section. Peace!